Father, we choose to worship you. We choose to worship you because of your great love for us. We choose to worship you because of all that you've done for us. We praise you, Lord God, for you have been so good to us. Hitherto you have helped us. In times of trouble, you've sustained us. When all else seemed like there was no way out, you made a way. When we were up against the wall, you lifted us up over it. When we felt the weight and the stress of life on us, you bore us up in your loving arms. When we felt unprotected, you put your hands over us, covering us like a mother covers its hen. And oh my God of heaven, we adore your name. We worship you, Lord God, because you are the King of glory. We worship you because you love us with an undying love. We worship you because there is no one like you, Jehovah. And so today, O oh God, be pleased with our praises. Be pleased, O oh God, as we raise our hearts and our hands to heaven and sing in worship to you, not because you need it, but because it shows our thanksgiving. So we bless your holy name today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Pickering Pentecostal Church. Good morning to those online. We welcome you to this great metropolis of Pickering, where we have seen the most beautiful spring winter weather for those online it was our first day of spring and we got the snowfall we did not get throughout the winter but it proves there is no one like our god because no one could turn it off or turn it on only god can make it all happen and it causes us to remember the lord is god and there is no other so we're gonna stand this morning and praise him with every breath that is within us we are going to praise the lord let everything that has breath praise the lord good morning ppc God is good, God is good, and all the time, we're going to clap our hands today and everything that has been, say praise the Lord, say praise the Lord, let everything that has been, say praise the Lord, praise the Lord, I'll praise in the valley, I'll praise on the mountain, I'll praise when I'm sure. I'll praise when I'm doubting. I'll praise when I'm numbered. Praise when surrounded. Cause praise is the water. My enemies drowning. Oh, as long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise. Still in control Cause my 
and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater. I praise. Praise cause you're sovereign. Praise cause you reign. Praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you.
something different. Something different. Say hallelujah here and now. You have turned my life around. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. I was lost, but now, now you sing hallelujah here and now. You have turned my life around. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Now Let's sing it again. Hallelujah, here and now. You have turned my life around. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. I was lost, but now he picked me up. He picked me up, turned me around, placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the master. I thank the say because he healed my heart. Change my name forever free. I'm not the same. I thank the master. I thank the same. One more time. Because he picked me up, turned me around, placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the master. I thank the savior. Because he healed my heart. He was changed my name. He was forever free. I'm not the same. I thank the master. This morning, amen, amen, because he, he picked me up, he turned me around, he placed my feet on solid ground, I thank the master, I thank the savior, because he picked me, because he healed my heart, he changed my name. Worship Him here this morning. Worship Him. Give Him all the glory and the praise this morning. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's sing together. Yeah. I will never fall. I didn't fall. I wasn't holding you up. There was nothing I could do to let you down. It doesn't take a trophy to make you Be 
Thank you, Lord. Folks, we believe that God is enough. We know that he is the one that's able to meet and supply every single need. Do you believe that today? That God is enough. In the series of circumstances, the highs, and then there's those other times, those lows, we believe that God is enough. He is our Jehovah Jireh. The word says that the Lord will provide. On this Palm Sunday, Jesus came to earth because of God's love for each one of us. He came as a baby, served as a king. The people on Palm Sunday believed that he was the king, but we know those that wanted else for Jesus. The end of the week, death on a cross, but again, that was for us, that God is enough. Jesus did it for you and I. Today, as we go to prayer, let's remember that Jesus is the King of kings, the Lord of lords, that he is enough in every one of our circumstances. We give him thanks for that today. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Believe that he is enough. Father, thank you so much as we declared today that you are the one that make, is able to make everything possible. Father, that you are enough. You are our Jehovah Jireh. And Father, for that, we give you thanks. Thank you for your son, Jesus, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Because of what he did, we can have relationship with you and be in tune with yourself. So Father, thank you for what you are going to do in our lives. In the midst of the difficulties, the challenges, we know that we're not alone, that you are with us at all times, that you are our Jehovah Jireh. You are more than enough. Father, we declare that today in each one of our lives. 
We believe that you are able to do amazing things in us. You've done that. We see that now, and we know that you will do that in the future. So, Father, thank you that you are enough. Your son came to earth to share your love. So, Father, today we thank you for those that share the good news of Jesus Christ around our world. We think of our missionaries. We think of Christo and Sarah today. And, Father, we know that they are declaring the good news of your son, Jesus Christ. So, Father, all over this world, people will declare that today about your son. So, Father, we ask that you would protect Christo and Sarah, that you will help them in their missionary endeavors as they share the good news in challenging circumstances. But, God, in the midst of that, we know that you are enough, not just here in this auditorium, not just here in this community, in this nation, but all around the world, that you are enough. So, Father, thank you that we can declare that you are our Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide. Amen? Amen. Hey, because we're a church family, we celebrate with the good times, and then we also remember each other in the difficult times. We want to remember Pastor Liz's family this week. Uh, She had a sudden passing of her nephew, Matthew, uh, on, I believe, early this week. Sudden passing, leaving wife, two young kids, four years, two years of age. We also want to remember his parents, Rose and Lorne. And we want to pray peace and comfort in their family, in their circumstance. Also, Rose is going through treatments in the near future. And we want to pray for her. So we're praying peace into Pastor Liz's family, in Rose and Lorne. We're praying for healing in Rose's body. We can believe that God is enough, not just for us, but for those that are all around us. So I want you to raise your hands in faith, believing that God will share, minister his love, his healing touch in this family this week. Lord, we're just praying that you are enough. And God, that's so good to know in those high points. But God, when we're faced with difficult circumstances like this, and Lord, there's other families that go through similar times. But God, we're asking for Liz's family this week that they would sense your amazing peace. You've already spoken into their lives. They've sensed the prayers of the people. They've sensed your touch, your comfort in their lives. But God, we're asking again that amazing peace that we don't understand would just be so evident in this family. Father, we do pray for his wife. We pray for his two kids. Lord, we ask that you would strengthen them, that hope, the comfort that only comes from yourself. Father, we pray for Rose and Lauren. And Father, we pray only in your name. You came, your son came to good news, but also died on the cross. Healing is available because of what your son Jesus did. So Father, we declare that in Jesus' name, that you would touch Rose's body, that you would take away the cancer, you would take away this illness, Father, that she won't have to go through these treatments. So Father, we're asking that you would speak into her life, that you would touch her life, that you would remove this from her body. And Father, that we would know that you're the one that's at work in each of their lives. So, Father, we give you praise for what you're going to do. Peace and healing. So amazing that comes from you. You are an amazing God. You are more than enough. Amen? Amen. Fantastic. That's the beauty. We can go to an amazing God, a powerful God, and know that he is able to take care of us. We want to thank you for being here today and trust that you've already been enjoying the service. Um, watching you worship. I saw a couple of young guys over here worshiping well. You're worshiping good and well. Thank you, Troy and worship team, for leading us today. Amazing that God is able to work and move in each one of us. I alluded to a few moments, Palm Sunday. We know that all over the globe, people will celebrate uh, today, recognizing Jesus coming into the city and the people crying out, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. So just before you're seated, in-house, why don't you look at someone and say, Hosanna! And online, uh, you're free to use the chat options available there as you welcome each other online today. We want to thank you for being at PPC today. At this time, it's my opportunity to share tithes and offerings with you. We thank you for your faithfulness in financial giving here at PPC. Folks, as you give, PPC is able to share the good news of Easter and of God's love for each one of us displayed through his son, Jesus Christ. Look, kingdom work won't happen effectively without each one of us participating in church life, and that includes financial giving and support. PPC 
needs the support of each and every one of you. So we thank you for participating in kingdom work today. There's several ways that you can give online and support PPC here. On the screen, there's several ways that they're for you. You can go to the website. That's ppclife.ca. There's a big give button there. You click on that, and you can follow the prompts that are there. One of the easy ways is to e-transfer your support giving to give at ppclife.ca. Makes it easy. And then you can use the Tithely app. That's T-I-T-H-E dot L-Y. And you can give through your credit card donations also. There's a QR code there. Take a pic. Scan that. It will just make the giving really easy there. So, folks, thank you for giving to Kingdom Work here at PPC. We can share the good news here, outside, around our world, and support those missionaries that are sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. So we want to thank you for your faithfulness to the kingdom today. There's lots of exciting things going on here at PPC, so please take note of what's coming up on the screens for you today. God bless. Good morning, PPC. I'm Tim, and this is what you need to know. If you are ages 55 to 65, join us on Sunday, April 14th at 1.30 p.m. for the first ever Encore Food, Fun, and Friends event. This is an opportunity to get to know one another, build relationships, and find out what God has planned for this age group. This event is free, but we still need you to sign up to get in on the light lunch and door prize. Visit our website to register. Passion Week Prayer will take place this Tuesday and Wednesday in-house at 7 p.m. each night. Join us for a powerful time of prayer and praise. This is a reminder to all ministry workers. This Wednesday, March 27th, is part two of our mandatory training for those involved in serving at the arena. That's this Wednesday, 7 p.m., right here at the church. We are collecting non-perishable food items to help restock our local food banks. Collect a box today after service, then bring your filled box to the PPC gym on Sunday, April 7th. This coming Friday is Good Friday, and we will be having just one morning service. Join us here at PPC on March 29th at 10 a.m. Then, get ready for Easter Sunday at the arena in Pickering. Head down Squires Beach Road, past the church, and remember to park in the tiered parking garage. And then, enter the arena for 10 a.m. And remember, our theme for this outreach service is everyone bring one. See you next Sunday, church family. Thanks, PPC. And this has been What You Need to Know. prepare for our week, our Passion Week of prayer, our Passion Week of presenting to friends and families and co-workers and others that uh, Easter matters because Easter is what our entire Christian life is pivoted on, that Christ came and Christ died for us. And so we want to make sure that you are inviting others and we want to remind you of the power of an invitation. And so here's a clip and then I'll tell you about it. Norma retired as a young retiree and I I discovered that, invited her to help us do some work at the office and each week she would tell me, oh, my husband enjoyed your service. Oh, he talks about your preaching. He boasts to his friends. I said, why am I not meeting your husband? I keep seeing her sit alone. And so I asked you one day, I said, where's this husband of yours that keeps talking about my service? And what did you tell me? I said to you, Pastor Marie, my husband is very difficult. He, I would invite him to church and he would not come. But yet he's telling everyone that you are his pastor. <laughs> and, and he would watch you online. And when I go home, he would say, oh, I, the service was good. The message was good. And I said, yes, but you are supposed to come out to church. And so one day, um, after I came to church on Sunday, and Pastor Marie called me aside, and she said to me, I am coming to your house to invite your husband out to church, but don't tell him. Don't let him know that I'm coming. So I said, I won't let him know. I won't say anything. And so one day the doorbell rang, and there was Pastor Marie, and I go, I know he's not going to get away with this one. 
My thought that day as I kept watching this woman sit alone, I thought, if Mohammed won't go to the mountain, what? Yes, Bring the mountain to Mohammed. So I went that Sunday and I told her, don't let him, don't answer the door, let him answer. Open the door and I look and say, Oh my God. <laughs> That's the pastor I'm looking at every Sunday. So I said, Hello, Pastor Marie. She said, You're Derek. I said, Yes, I am. And she mentioned to me that <clears throat> I'm inviting you to church. How am I going to say no to somebody like Pastor Marie? <laughs> So I invited you. I said on Easter Sunday, be seated over there so I can wave to you. And you came, and on that Sunday, you responded to the call for salvation. Definitely, definitely. And today, Derek serves as an usher. He's very joyful. He's that tall giant that you see walking around. Folks, this is what God can do. Thank you. Thank you. Norma I want to remind everyone online and in-house, if we don't extend the invitation, we deny them the privilege of coming to meet with their Savior. And we're not the one who saves people. God saves them. There's a moment in each person's life. For Derek, it was the knock on his door that sealed the deal because he was already tracking with Christ. He wanted to be a part, but he had not taken the step, and he wouldn't even listen to his wife. So folks, you don't know who it is, and you don't know when it is. Our job is to make the invitation and leave God to his job, which is salvation. Amen? So I'm looking forward to next week. It's going to be a week. Uh, I'm, I'm so excited. I don't know if I can sleep throughout the week. You have no idea. I'm buzzing and bubbling already. So excited about what God is going to do at that arena. And we re remind you, we've done the notices. Drive on the Bailey Street. It's uh, to Bailey. Squires Beach and past the church. Those that are online, if you're going to come on in, just drive past Pickering Church. And when it dead ends, take a right and you'll see the towered park, tiered park parking lot. You can't miss it. If you arrive at 11 to the parking lot, you are very late. So ensure that you arrive at least 10 to 15 minutes early. Park on the second level, it's easier, and then you will find it very easily, and we are excited about what God is going to do. I'm going to be preaching salvation message. We're going to be praying for healing. Those who need a healing, tell them to come. Where There's going to be faith in that place to see the resurrection of Christ bring resurrection of lives. And this Tuesday, I invite you to prayer Tuesday and Wednesday. I'm going to be speaking on the ark of his presence because we're going to carry the ark of his presence with us. You need to be here Tuesday at 7 p.m. Today you've been given a prayer card. Please hold on to it until the end or throughout the service. As you think of a name you're going to invite, write that name down because we're going to pray at the end of this service. Those online, grab a piece of paper and get ready to write down the name of the person you're going to pray into salvation. So that's all I need to share for now until I come back with the word. Just want to thank you for your prayers last week and I want to thank you for your faithfulness as we honored single parents and I saw the pictures that you guys came in the yellow and gold and we set a statement so next year there'll be a lot of people who realize we need to honor those who are holding holding the, the fort for both mom and dad and we want to change society by the little things we do to honor each other. Thank you. I had a blessed week in Singapore. It's a 12-hour time difference, and God has gifted me with the ability to skip jet lag at times, so I crash for a day, and then after that, I let jet lag know I have no time for this. We got to get going, so thank you for your prayers. Would you stand, and let's worship the Lord as we prepare for the word today. Jesus, I worship and
adore you. It's a simple chorus. I just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than I love you, Jesus. Just a simple voice thing. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Worship in this place. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. More than anything. Lord, I love you. I love you, Jesus. Worship and adore you. Worship and adore you. Just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Seasons change your faithful. 
say, you write my story. You hold it all. You hold it all to God of my present, my prayer. You're the God of my future. You write my story. You hold it all. your hands to heaven and say what you just sang God of my future God of my present you've held it all together I thank you I thank you Troy sang today I thank God we have so much to thank him for just raise your hands again and now you thank him. Not what I say. You thank him. Jesus. Come on, open your mouth. Don't worry about anyone. Online, open your mouth and thank him. There's so, I have so much to thank him for, but that's my thanks. What's yours? God of my future you write my story. You hold it all together. God of, my, God of my present. God of my future. You write my story. You hold it all to God of my present. God of my present. God of my future. You write my story. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Before you're seated, you can tell somebody anything you want. You can tell them he holds it together. He's the God of my future, my past, my present. You tell somebody something. What are you telling me? Eh? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, folks. 
Well, God bless you. Good to see all of you online. I can't see you. You can see me, but may you be blessed by the presence of the Lord. There's such a richness in the house today. As I get into the word, I want to thank God, thank Pastor Dennis for a powerful word last week that lines up with this word. I know that Pastor Dennis spoke to you about your spiritual eyes being open, and this message now comes right after it again to see that your eyes, if you didn't get it last week, then go back and listen because they build on each other. We don't see how the Bible is written to pivot one message to the other, but God is always causing us to see the bigness of our God. So today we're in Matthew 21 verse 1 to 11 and in it comes some warnings and so my message today is called the warnings the warnings uh we are at a point where Christ is uh, a- about to be crucified in the biblical time, in the biblical context. And we, as we prepare for Easter, uh, just go back to the slide, we are reshaping the culture. If we do not take seriously Easter week, Passion Week, the world will not take it seriously. And I'll re-emphasize, it was not the world that stole the Christmas message and made it a commercial thing. It was the church that gave up the focus of Christ in Christmas and allowed it to become a commercial thing. And if we are not careful, we will do the same with Easter and then look what the world is doing. No, look what the church is doing because we are not advocating that this is a pivotal time in the life and history of the church that we celebrate what Christ has done, we celebrate who Christ is, and we celebrate who Christ is coming to redeem, those who have accepted salvation. So folks, this is a warning. It's called the warnings today. And what is it about? We have to remember who we are preparing for. Who are we preparing for? Who are we preparing for? Jesus Christ. And what are we preparing for? His coming, heaven. So we can all go to heaven. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but there's only one way, and that is through acceptance of the Lord Jesus Christ. So Palm Sunday is a preparation signal for Easter. It's a preparation signal. And and, and so this each Palm Sunday, it signals the opening day for a Passion Week of remembering Jesus' walk to the cross, his dark hour before the cross, his suffering on the cross, his death on the cross, his burial, his sealed tomb, and finally his resurrection from the dead. That is what this week our focus and I trust if you're not fasting that you will be fasting this week and asking God for breakthroughs in every area of life society and all aspects that we would see something happen in our society that causes people to return to the Lord Jesus Christ so folks As we go through, we'll be reading Matthew 21 a little bit later. But this was not the first time that Christ predicted his own death. But the people refused to listen carefully and to hear him with clarity. See how it lines up with last week's message. It's the, are you hearing? Are you seeing? Are you, are you paying attention? So their ears were dull of hearing as they focused on the noises in their society and the distractions of worldliness rather than on God. God is always warning us. He never does anything to humanity that he has not warned us about. But the people are always choosing to ignore the warnings. They ignored Noah during the time of the flood. As much as they saw him build the boat, they still ignored him. And we are seeing every sign of his second coming. But we're in a decade where people are again ignoring him. How many ignored the weather warning of this weekend? Come on, I'm first one. How many got caught? I was wearing shoes on Friday when the snow fell. How many? Come on, put your hands up if you were there. You weren't ready? Let me see. Good, I'm not the only one. How many took the snow brush out of their cars? 
Come, yeah, thank you. Thank you for that one honest hand. Because I, I, I took the snow brush out because we hadn't had any snow. Those online, we had no snow. We had four snowfalls in the entire winter. And so I took the snow brush out, cleaned the car. And uh, yeah, do you know, so you're there with your gloves cleaning snow because why? You ignored the warning. I actually didn't even believe them. Well, because they're always 50-50. We tend to listen to all the other alarms that are given except the spiritual alarm. We listen to the seatbelt. Ding, 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 drives you crazy, crazy, crazy till you put it on. And if you stop listening to it, there comes a point it will stop, but you've put yourself in danger or at least get a ticket. We listen to all the different alarms. Most people listen to all their cell phone alarms, listening for the buzz, listening. Is there a ding? Oh, there's a message. Oh, got one. Ding. We listen to everything else. Recently, uh, I have a house alarm, and the, the house, house alarm battery was dinging. Or, you know what, that just helped me. You know, I'm wrong word, but, you know, concept. Uh, and I wasn't, I didn't know the house alarm had a battery. I, I, I thought that when they installed it, it was plugged in somewhere. So I, I'm hearing this thing. It's driving me crazy, but I didn't know where it was coming from. And I checked the fire alarm. I checked the smoke, everything. And I'm like, and so finally I followed it and it's the house alarm. And I'm like, why is it dinging? So I left it for a little while until it drove me nuts. And I called someone and they said, oh, there's a battery in there. I'm like, why would you put a battery in a house alarm? Well, it's a 10-year battery. Oh, I have to tell you this one quickly. It's a 10-year battery. Well, it expired in one year. I called the company. I said, it said, no, it's 1 to 10. I said, no, 1 to 10 is not a number. <laughs> 1 to 10 is not a number. 1 to 3, 3 to 5, 5 to 10. But 1 to 10 is not a number. I had to throw that in there. I won't name the company. But I had to unplug it until the new battery arrived. So I left myself in jeopardy. Do you realize that we are unplugging ourselves from listening and doing and seeing what Christ is saying to us in this day? And his warnings are not for evil, they're for our good. We're looking, oh God, we don't want that to happen. Every warning is for our good. Don't unplug. It's for our security, our protection. It's for us to prepare ourselves for blessings in the future so no devastation overcomes us. And most of us, we've heard it and we've seen it, but we pretend it's not happening. And we're going with the mantra of society, everything's going to be fine. There is coming a day and we need to be prepared for that day. So the alarm today is Jesus Christ, our Savior, is coming back soon. Are you seeing the signs? Are you hearing the dings? Because when your spiritual tuning is alert, you don't miss it. The Redeemer, our Savior, wants to restore all people back to God. And Jesus keeps warning us, take the kingdom of God seriously. Tell somebody this morning, friend, Take the kingdom of God seriously. Tell somebody. I received that. Take the kingdom of God seriously. So the warnings. Let's look back now. This is before the triumphant entry. Let's look back at some warnings. uh, 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 Previous messages that were preached. We're, We're now at Matthew 21, but this is now Matthew 16. Matthew 16, verse 13, and I'll skip and just do verse 20 and 22. Here's what happens. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do they say that the Son of Man is? Then he sternly warned the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. From then on, Jesus began to tell his disciples plainly that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem and that he would suffer many terrible things at the hands of the elders, the leading priests, the teachers of the religious law. He would be killed, but on the third day he would be raised from the dead. But Peter took him aside and began to reprimand him for saying such things. Heaven forbid, Lord, he said, this will never happen to you. We're very much like Peter. It's like, I don't know that's going to... Our grandparents have been saying he's coming in. You know, heaven forbid, it's not going to happen. And so, folks, 
We are not preparing for the kingdom of God. And so he keeps giving the warnings again. So Jesus was not afraid to go to the cross. And our denial of him going to the cross does not change the fact of what he did for humanity. There'll be people like, I don't believe in that. That is your problem because it doesn't change what he did, whether you believe it or not. Folks, it's not up to people to, to believe. To, sorry, it's not up to people to make the determination if it happened. It happened and you choose to believe it or reject it, but you're going to one day see the warning was real. So Christ's sole purpose of coming to earth as a divine God in human flesh was to live among God's creation, to feel the feelings of humanity, and to prove at the same time the power of God to work upon his people. We walk in divine power because of the cross of Jesus Christ. That is why healings will happen, miracles will happen, deliverance will happen, because he demonstrated to us how to embrace all the good things and promises of God and how to reject the evil that the enemy is trying to hurl upon society even in this day. So he came to bring salvation to each person, offering eternal life with God forever and ever. So why? God sent his son, Jesus, to die for our sins because God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they work together saying we must restore the radiance of God's power to humanity so that fallen human beings will understand the true power of walking in relationship with a God who loves them. 1 Timothy 2 verse 5 to 6 says, There's only one God and one mediator who can reconcile God and humanity, the man Christ Jesus. He gave his life to purchase freedom for everyone. This is the message God gave to the world at just the right time. I love that. 1 Timothy 2 5 6, if you want to put that in your, in your book or in your phone. or so, For he reconciles us and he came just at the right time. But he always gave a warning. So here's a second warning. Matthew 17, verse 22 to 23. After they gathered again in Galilee. So the first one was Caesarea Philippi. Now he's in Galilee. And Jesus told them, the son of man is going to be betrayed into the hands of the enemies. He will be killed. But on the third day, he will be raised from the dead. And the disciples were filled with grief. That's another funny one. The first one, Peter rebuked him. Don't say that. It's not going to happen. Now they're filled with grief. It's like, oh, no, he's going to die. And there are many of us that are in that, oh, Jesus died. I don't know. But, no. Uh, uh, uh. The warnings will always get stronger and stronger until we either heed them or we fall prey to whatever consequences comes after the warnings. And nowadays, many items we use, they all have warning signs. The new cars have a warning light on the on the on the on the. Yeah, 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 the, the side mirror, the that, <laughs> right? And you, you, when a car is too close, right, you see the, 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 isn't that a warning? What do you do? Pull over. There are warnings in everything, everything. Airplanes have warnings. Pull up, pull up, pull up. Folks, can I just tell you? Pull in, pull in, pull up, pull up. Do something. But don't ignore all the warning signs that Christ has given us today. There's Hardly anything that comes without consequences. And we are today are trying to blame, many people are blaming God. Oh, I would go to church if my life was better. I would go to church if God would do this. God is not a jack-in-the-box. God is the creator of the universe. We submit to him. He does not submit to us. So Jesus, again, giving another warning First is Sarah Philippi, then Galilee. Now here's another one, Matthew 20, verse 17. Jesus was going up to Jerusalem. He took the 12 disciples aside and privately told them what was going to happen to him. Listen, he said, we're going up to Jerusalem where the Son of Man will be betrayed to the leading priests and teachers of the law. They will sentence him to death. Then they will hand him over to the Romans to be mocked, flogged, and whipped, and crucified. But on the third day, he will be raised from the dead. 
Folks, do you see how many times he kept telling, scripting, and letting the disciples know it's going to happen. Those that are contesting with you and contending with you going, oh, I don't believe in all this. It is written in history what Christ has done, and it's recorded in the word what Christ has done. And so we, how many more times do we need to be warned that he is coming back? The Christ who was resurrected from the dead shall return, and in order order for us to take this seriously, we have to acknowledge that he's warning us again today. Can I hear a louder amen this morning? So by ignoring the warnings, people then miss the protecting, protective power. And many people, they don't want to hear the good news. They want to heed alternative facts and find other types of freedom. The bad news is When you're into a soft denial, there awaits a harsher future. And the world is into a soft denial. Oh, no, sorry. The world is into denial of Christ, but the church is in a soft denial. I want to tell you something, folks. This church will always preach the word of God. We'll preach it long and we'll preach it strong. We'll preach it good and we'll preach it like it says it because we want you to have all the blessings and the promises of God unleashed upon your life. We want you, your friends and your family, your kids and all of those, we want to see a great harvest of souls come back into the kingdom. The church is to be filled with people who are sinners wanting to be saved by grace. The church is not just for those who've already encountered Christ. It's for everyone who needs to meet the Savior. That is what the church is about. While I'm on the topic, we're going over to the arena, right next to the casino. And people have thought, you are crazy. I had one pastor friend call me. He says, so there's still Pentecost in Pentecostal church. I said, yes. I want to share it on Tuesday night. Folks, we're not going over there to envelop and take on their spirit. We're going with the presence of Christ so rich in our lives that we change the atmosphere. Oh, you got to be here Tuesday to hear the word I've got. Mm, Shoe glory. Touch me Tuesday and I'll sizzle. People prefer that we tell them lies than tell them the truth. Because they become easily discouraged by the truth rather than becoming empowered by the truth. They're not fully prepared for life or death because many people fear death. So what they want to, don't say anything negative, only say positive things. Do you see what's happened to our, even our kids? Little Johnny never does anything wrong. So now we've got all these old kids running around and they're, I'm depressed. Yeah, you're depressed because you never. No one can tell you no, and when and there, life has to have truth. Little Johnny, what you did is wrong, wrong, wrong. In my day, I would feel wrong this way. But in your day, we just want you to sit down and hear me clearly. It is wrong. You don't do things like that. Little Sarah, you may feel that you are God's princess, but other people must be respected. Do you hear me? We have got to start getting the truth into the generation so they stop being depressed about everything. The world is not fully prepared for what is going to happen in the times to come. And when you begin, most people now, how many people no longer watch the news because it's too much bad news? Come on, put it up, put it up. up. See, half the church. Why? Because it's coming faster than we can handle it. But I'm going to tell you, we haven't seen anything yet. Because what Jesus died for is that we would all be prepared for heaven, not that we just live in the mess of earth. Mm, Somebody. So Passion Week, we will not be ashamed to tell everyone everywhere that we are celebrating the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. We will not be ashamed. The Bible tells us in Romans 1, for I am not ashamed of the good news about Christ. It is the power of 
of God at work, what? Saving everyone who believes. God, we ask you to save everyone who will believe and call them into faith to believe. We are not, are you ashamed of the gospel? I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power of God at work. And there is, yes, the devil is big and bad, but he didn't create God. God created him. I need you to know my God is still in control. So Jesus speaks to all fearful and non-fearful today. He's speaking to everyone. Whether you're fearful or non-fearful, Jesus is speaking to you. So here we now arrive at the text of today, Matthew 21, verse 1 to 11. And this is where we are preparing ourselves for the second coming of the Lord. As Jesus and the disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the town of Bethphage on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of them ahead. Going to the village over there, he said, as soon as you enter it, you will see a donkey tied there with its colt beside it. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone asks what you're doing, just say, the Lord needs them. And he will immediately let you take them. This took place to fulfill the prophecy that said, Tell the people of Jerusalem, look, your king is coming to you. He's humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. The two disciples did just as Jesus commanded. They brought the donkey and the colt to him, threw their garments over the colt, and he sat on it. Most of the crowd spread their garments on the road ahead of him, and the others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Jesus was in the center of the procession, and all the people around him were shouting, Praise God, the Son of David. Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in the highest heaven. The entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as he entered. Who is this, they asked. And the crowds replied, it's Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Praise God for the word. As I'm reading verse 10, it jumped out to me. The entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar. God let the entire city, let the entire region of Durham be in an uproar as we celebrate Good Friday and Easter Sunday about the king. So here's my topic quickly to you. It's about the fickleness of humans. The fickleness of humans. The people knew who Jesus was. So I got to ask a question. So why did they ignore him? He had been doing many miracles. His last warning was a very profound statement. He says, I am the king, but I'm now surrendering my earthly vessel as I'm preparing to return to my heavenly father. He kept on prophesying that he's going, even to the disciples and to those around. So then why is it that when we see what is true and what is right, that we choose to ignore it, telling ourselves it's not going to happen now, I'm okay, I don't have to live like this, don't let fear, don't, don't let the fear of God get you, you're okay, there'll be time, and we're all making these statements as if we're in control of our own breath, as if breath doesn't come from God. Somebody talked to me this morning. We're acting as if we are, and just because medical science can give us so much help, we think that we are in control of the breath that is within us. This breath within me is not because of doctors. It's not because of any money I have. It's not because of anything else, but that God is able to keep breath inside of my body until he says no more. So Jesus was preparing for the cross, and they didn't want to hear about that. Likewise, as we're preparing to celebrate what Christ did on the cross, many don't want to hear about it. And there are even some Christians who want the soft approach, don't don't make it. Many have removed the cross. Many don't want crosses in church. Thank God we've got our cross back lit up again. The cross is the central point of all that we are living for. Because of the cross, there is eternity for you and I. (laughs) Hebrews 2.14 says, because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the Son also came and became flesh and blood. For only as a human being could he die and only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power over death. 
Only in this way could he set free all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. You know what he's saying? There are people who are living as slaves to the fear of dying. And I tell you, when you're walking with the Lord, there's no fear because there's a better place of coming. I'm not saying that you want to go. You know, if you're, that's suicidal. <laughs> he didn't call you to suicidal. <laughs> but, but there should be a peace that passes all understanding. So we are not slaves. That's the word he used. Don't become a slave to the fear. Fear is false evidence becoming real, appearing real. So we, when we get into fear, we begin to see things and do things that are outside of God's purpose. But Christ dead on the cross was God's purpose for our eternity so that we know with assurance that there is a better place and a better life coming because Christ secured it for us. The cross was the Father's ultimate objective for Christ coming to the earth. The cross was dear to Christ's heart because he knew his fellow humanity would be set free from the bondage of sin. The cross was pivotal for humanity as it alone can reconcile human beings back to God and reconcile us in right relationship with each other. The cross was the new covenant God made in order to turn humanity's lives back towards the former glory that he promised. 1 John 2.2 2 says, He himself is the sacrifice that atones for our sins, and not only our sins, but the sins of all the world. He atoned for the sins of all the world. That is why the rest of the world must come back to recognizing that it's only the cross that can bring them back to God. Folks, the cross is our encouragement and motivation. And Paul reminds us in his prayer in Ephesians, as he prays for us, he reminds us of the privileges that we have because of the power of the cross. Here's what Paul says in Ephesians 1, 18, 20. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light. Oh, come on, just think of this. Flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given us to those he called his holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Paul understood it and Paul left it for us. And so now here's Jesus' last warning before he left. His warning to everyone, Matthew 21. This is where he calls the disciples to see if they're seeing. Remember the message last week with spiritual eyes. So he sends the disciples on an errand, but it wasn't just an errand, it was a spiritual errand. It was a spiritual errand looking like an earthly chore. See, some earthly things we do have spiritual significance. He says to them, go get a donkey and it must be a colt. He's saying, get the stubborn young thing, the foolish thing, the least useful thing, and that's what I want you to get. And then he says, don't put a saddle on it, which is what, don't put all the trappings of the world on it. Just get me the colt. Don't get all flowers and roses and all that. You see, as Jesus climbed on a donkey's colt, nothing seemed natural unless your spiritual eyes could see what God was doing. Mm. Hello? See, the people would be asked, the people were asking, the Bible says, who is this? And here's what you've got to understand. In those days, much, now we have vehicles, so you can think in vehicle status. I'll tell you in horse status. In those days, horses had a status statement similar to cars today. There's a types of horses. There was the majestic horse, horses, the Clydesdale, the Arabian, or the Frisian. All those horses were considered top of the chain. If you were a king or a notoriety, you came riding into the city and everybody would go, oh, who is that? If we saw, if you see a Lamborghini pull up at the church, you're like, oh, who's driving that? I'd be going, who going tied today? Notoriety and kingship was noticed in public by what they came in on. Jesus asked for the reverse. Don't get me a horse, get me a donkey. Stubborn, willful, stupid, 
thing. Get me one of those because I deal with that all the time. Jesus was probably thinking, just adding that in. But he said, but don't get me the donkey. Get me the donkey's colt. You imagine him coming in on a little colt. I'm the king. I'm the king on a stupid little donkey's colt. And the people normally would ignore that. But when the Spirit of God is moving, they begin to see revelation. They would ask if you came in on an Arabian horse, who is that? But when Jesus came in, on what was the reverse? This is important because we think we are under the culture, but we are actually above the culture. He came in on the donkey's colt, and the city went in an uproar. Who is this? And he said, and again, if you had the Arabian or the Clydesdale or Frisian horses as they listed in the book, if you had those ones, okay, you'd have to put the big elaborate saddle probably with a cold tip and all of that. He said, don't put anything on the little colt. It was so embarrassing that it says, I'm translating, that the, the, the disciples threw their cloaks over it. They took their outer garment and goes, you can't just ride bare back like you're the king. He wanted nothing to make the world see who he is because the power of Christ should draw them to himself. We don't have to do trappings for people. He is enough. Most of the crowds, let me read Matthew 21. Most of the crowd spread their garments on the road ahead of him. The others cut branches from the trees, spread them on the road. Jesus was in the center of the procession. And the people all around him were shouting, Praise God for the son of David. Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in the highest heaven. And the entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as he entered. Who is this, they ask. See, Jesus did the reverse so they would take the king of God, the king of, the Lord, the king of heaven, seriously. They would take the kingdom of God seriously. Folks, you don't have to go to people and do elaborate things for them to come to Christ. Go in humility, go in simplicity, go even in your stupidity. Hello? I think sometimes we're trying to be so astute. I've told you many times, I will preach as simply as I can so I could reach as many as I can. Be stirred to ask the question, the key question of life today. Who is this? And then worship him. It says they worshiped him, they threw palm branches. They began to demonstrate, this doesn't make sense. Your friends and co-workers and family are going to go, it doesn't make sense. No. It can't make sense to the human mind because it's spiritually given. So that's why we pray for their eyes to be opened, for the enlightenment to come, that they would know who Christ is. This Passion Week, I'm going to ask you to invite people to come to God. And even the skeptics need a reminder. Who are we preparing for? Jesus. It's not about our churchiology. It's not about the dressing up and all of this. Some of you are going to hate me. Please don't wear the big hat and all that next week. Just keep, keep, keep the hat, keep the hat, keep the hat for another week. I don't want to frighten anybody. <laughs> Love me anyhow. I know Easter is about the Easter hat, right? Easter bun, Easter hat, Easter dress. We grew up. Can we just come with the presence of the Lord so rich in us? That even as we're passing by people, remember when Peter walked, his shadow caused people to be healed. His shadow. Can you come with such a presence that people tremble and ask, I need to know who he is. I need them to ask, I need to know who he is. The skeptics need a reminder. The skeptics, even the skeptics need a reminder. And many are ignoring the warnings to remind them warnings are for our benefit, for their safety. 
So I got to ask you, who are you praying for this week to come to salvation? That's what Easter is about. Online, whenever you listen to this message, it's still the same. Who are you praying for? Who are you going to reach out to? Who are you going to purposely touch? Who are you going to purposely speak to? Who are you going to do something? So even in your simplicity or your stupidity, they see the power of Christ at work. I've always told you, I do not understand my life as I travel. I don't do anything. I've got my own little system. And no matter where I go in airports, people will come up to me. Why? Because when you carry the presence of the Lord and people are afraid, something draws them to you. When you walk around your society, they're either going to fight you or they're going to draw to you. When I, walk, I walked into a store recently, just recently, get ready, folks, just recently, and I went up, I, I was actually going to buy lipstick. So I won't name the store because I'll give them this. I'm going to let them off the hook this time. I went in and I'm saying, excuse me, can I just get this color again? He looked at me. I said, this color? I brought the thing. You have to go to someone over there. I said, are you busy? No. No. And I realized spirit's fighting spirit right now, so I ain't moving. I'm going to break this down. I'm going to break the spirit down. So I stood there and I said, okay, let's start over. Good morning. All I need is a lipstick and I'll be out of here. So could you just get me that lipstick? And he goes on the headphones. Can you bring lipstick over? And I'm sitting there and thinking, this ain't going well. <laughs> spirit fighting. See, when you get that, you've got to realize what it is. We don't know each other, so it's not a personal fight. What was it? A spiritual fight. Because when you carry the Spirit of God with you, they're either going to fight you or they're going to want to be part of, they want to they engage you or fight you. So after I got it from the other person and I'm heading out, got to make sure we add a little love. So you go by and you're like, thanks for helping me. <laughs> Folks, we're fighting powers and principalities in high places. But we're not afraid of it. We have every warning he's coming again. That's why we must be serious about the seasons where people are open to hearing the gospel. Passion Week opens their spirit to hearing the gospel because Easter matters. So right now, worship team's going to sing. Online, would you grab a piece of paper? Everyone pull out your paper. As the worship team sings this quietly, I want you to get your paper and you want you to write down the names of people that you're going to invite. Don't just tell me who you're going to pray for because I don't know when you're praying. Who you're going to invite. And that means even your neighbor. If you can't think of the number or the address, then just write the house, the pink house, three doors down. But you're going to write it because you're going to live it. If you need a pen, ushers are coming with pens in their hands. If you don't have a paper, just raise a hand. They'll get you a pen. But we're going to write. Would you start singing as they prepare? Online, would you get the paper and do the same? We're believing God today for miracles, for salvation. Just come to the front, ushers. We need some pens. You be writing those names down at home. You begin praying. You begin writing it down. This is what matters today. I want you to think. Think of people that you should invite. And have every name written down. Because we're going to pray. We're going to believe God. Holy my. Hosanna, Hosanna in the high. Mm, come on, keep writing. 
You got a whole page to fill at home. Get a piece of paper. You can get up and get a paper. This is important today. If you can't invite someone, I got to ask you. What is this about? What is this about? If you're new to the city, then who are you going to pray for on your in your in your in your community? Who can you drop a card to? It matters. It matters. with me this morning and online welcome you to join us in prayer at this time would you just hold those cards out up however you want to you know every name or number you wrote on it and I want you now to begin to call them out in prayer as I pray and I want you throughout this week to be thinking of others write it down and keep praying don't leave the work to somebody else every one of us that have been blessed of God can impact someone else's life even if you're new and you said I just started coming to church or I just uh, I just got saved or I'm not even saved yet you know somebody who needs to come in you know some people that are head heading for hell and you can help them to be heaven bound so father in the name of Jesus, we lift, O oh God, the names to you, the sheets to you, the addresses to you. Though God, the person that we've seen in a store, uh, the co-worker, God, we lift them to you. Every person needs salvation. When you came into Jerusalem and you, Lord God, rode in on a colt, a donkey's colt, a stupid, silly animal that, oh God, was not even broken. Oh God, you did it to demonstrate. You're not looking for the high and lofty things. You're just looking for us to accept that you are the king of glory. And so, Lord God Almighty, I pray for every person, oh God, that boldness will come to your people, that we will not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power of God to salvation. That we will remember salvation heals. Salvation delivers. Salvation sets free. And that we would begin to walk, oh God, in a newness that causes creation to change and shift and the atmosphere to shift so that many will come into the kingdom of God. Father, we are not the tail of society. We're the head of society. So I I declare over everyone a peace, uh, oh God, and a powerful presence. Uh, my God, a confidence, uh, a boldness in the Holy Ghost. Uh, my God, loosen our testimonies, oh God, that we will remember that you saved us. You set us free from the bondages of sin for which Christ came. Father, reverse everything, oh God, in our society by using us for your glory. I ask it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Folks, this morning I want to tell you, this is going to be a great season. We're going to see the power of God unleashed in an evil day. And it begins with each one of us when we take that the kingdom of God is serious and that we are taking heaven seriously. And we want to see everyone go to heaven, no one go to hell. Amen? Praise God. Would you be seated for a moment? Don't cut off online yet. I want to remind you this morning of some of the blessings that are coming, some of the things that we need to do.
And would you this morning uh, just allow us as we remind, give you some reminders. First of all, at the end of the service, there'll be prayer partners here. If you want to give your heart to the Lord today, you don't have to wait till next week. Today is the day of salvation. The Lord loves you. He desires for you to be reconciled to him. So would you make that your portion today? Good Friday. I've got to say it online and in-house. Uh, Okay, Good Friday, one service only. Well, how many? Uh, is it at 10.15? What time is it? Ah, oh, bless God. Don't miss the worship. It's going to be powerful. There's Easter Sunday service is where? Pickering Arena. Remember, when you tell folks to come, tell them it's the one beside the casino, not at the casino. Best if they drive by the church and then they will find it easily. If you come at 11, you are late. If you arrive at the parking at 11, you're very late for the grand opening. You want to be there early and park and come on in. You will be given a ticket. Please take it and tell others it's okay. They require a count. And so that's why you'll just keep the ticket. That's their count. Shuttle service is available from 9 a.m. right here. If you don't want to go park there, park here. Shuttle will be running back and forth every 10 minutes. And as you take the invite cards, invite family and friends and co-workers and business people and people you meet on the street, you invite them. There's online version of it you can get. So you can put it on your Instagram and your Facebook and all of those things you use for evil, you can use it for good. So would you just please do that? Uh, by the way, if anyone, uh, if you, anyone receives a Facebook or an Instagram message from me directly, uh, I, I've been compromised. I've not been on Facebook for five years. So someone stole my account and they're using it. It ain't me. I don't ask you for anything. So if you give it to them, you are silly. Lastly, as we go to the arena on Sunday, uh, this coming Sunday, there's just a few little things you need to know what to do and what not to do. Here we go. Don't worry, Pastor Swan. I just need a pair of your shoes. I'm going to go catch me some sinners. There's a right one! Let's go get him! Halt! You should be giving that money to the church! You're gonna go to hell and burn and burn and burn! R-E-P-E-N-T! Repent, I say! Repent! Pentecostal Church, what what are you what are you doing here? What, oh, we're having church at the arena. Come and see. Sounds good. Praise the Lord. Folks, thank you so much. Online, God bless you. All of you, just give an applause for those online with you. God bless you.